So first and foremost, uh, good afternoon everyone. Thank you for coming to the opening of the ninth season of the nation. Faith in the future. I'm Yang Siu. So before I start, I first have to come out. Because I'm kind of in an odd situation. I'm gay, I'm Christian, and not only am I Christian, I am the ordained pastor in uh, the church. So for Christians, they think that I'm trying to convert them to be gay. <laughs> and for the gays, they think, for the LGBT community, they think I'm there to convert them to Christianity. So today, I'm up front. Today, I'm not here to convert anyone. Today, I'm the chairperson of the Organizing Committee for Nation 2013 which I've been involved since 2006. I was involved in the first year. I was just doing background stuff, moving you know, chairs and um, doing sound stuff, which um, I will do it more. Given that some people have asked me about this year's team, Faith in the Future, I think I need to shed a little light on how we got there, because people got Faith in the Future, is it young behind all that? Um, yeah, I know, you know, it's like here to say that the gay pastor, and of course you would think Faith in the Future, um, we had a meeting um, at a cafe uh, with some folks um, and at um, uh, next to Rebels Hotel, what was that? What? Entrepreneur, right? The, 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 and, and I don't remember if it's, it was Oetia or uh, Mafia or Tanya who came up with Sleep in the Future. They came up quite spontaneously, right? And, and all of a sudden, yes. Because this happened at the time when um, Pastor Long's call attracted a lot of attention when he made a statement to uh, the uh, America's senior minister, Dr. Tom. So we play on the word faith. Because last year we were looking back at our past, our history, and where we come from. This year we want to look ahead. Uh, but before we start to the actual programming, I have a lot of things to, to do. First, a lot of thank yous to read out. Uh, Inclination cannot happen without a lot of people's involvement, generosity, pouring in their time, their energy and resources into this. We want, we want to thank you to 7213 Theatre Works for the venue here today, uh, for the closing and for the venue for our closing events, uh, Southeast Asia and Contradiction, uh, for Artistry Cafe for the venue for I Will Survive with music. Select books for hosting Galian Invasion, uh, Free Community Church for hosting Transcending Gender. Uh, thank you to Friday IS Magazine and Beat Around the Bush for their media coverage. To CT and K Camden for their financial support. Um, to Yang Fa as well for his financial support to the nation um, for the book sales for I Will Survive. Um, to Gary and Kenneth right at the back for the design uh, and the logo for uh, all the graphic design and the suites that uh, you will see um, at the entrance, uh, they thought about it and they came up and conceptualized it and, and got it done. Uh, I also want to thank Sayoni, uh, OC Women, Purple Alliance, SG Rainbow, Bear Project, Young Up Here for their participation and involvement in the planning process. To a thank you to the other queer LGBT groups which have provided support, companionship in the process. People like us, Common Pride Center, Pink Dot, Transgender Alliance, Bear Project, SG Rainbow, Singapore, and my apologies to the groups which are left out. And finally, a big thank you to the people who volunteered today. Welton and Chase and Daniel doing the AV. Lipsin and Hafiz, who is doing um, the, what do you call it, um, ushers. Thank you to all of you, and thank you all of you for coming. So you can have <laughs> We operate openly. We declare our intentions 
and we have nothing to hide. I have an agenda for, the, for a future that LGBT people will no longer live in fear. Fear of being rejected by their loved ones, kicked out of home from the people dearest to them. Fear of being bullied, called names, and even fear of physical assault. Fear of being discriminated at the workplace, at public places, and anywhere. Fear of losing their jobs, their livelihoods, simply because of who they are. I have an agenda because without a roadmap of where we are heading, a destination, we will just be passively allowing things to happen to us. We will just be reacting. And up to now, much of our activism has been around reacting. I recognize that amongst you today, many of you have been doing your part, be it speaking on behalf of the LGBT community, making your presence felt on a personal or community level, or organizing community in big and small ways. All of you are putting your money where your mouth is. To all of you, thank you for your work and your sacrifice. But we are often doing things in individual silos, hoping that somehow we will have a collective impact to change things. I think we can do better. While we're doing different things in different ways, and sometimes we disagree on how we do things, we need to have some sort of master plan, some sort of big picture view instead of hoping that all the pieces will fall in the right place, we need to be coordinated, like our opposition, you know, the ones who are opposing us, they are more coordinated than us. We need to have a glimpse of the future so we know what to do now. We also need to recognize that we are all interconnected. Too often we are too divided amongst ourselves, and I've seen the LGBT movement in the US in an effort to appear more mainstream to the straight community. They left the transgender community out of the equation. In 2007, in an effort to get the Employment Non-Discrimination Act and the ENDA passed, transgender protections were removed from the legislation, claiming that they wouldn't have enough votes to pass an inclusive uh, and uh, D was thrown under the bus. It's just LGB. We will come back for you after we get our rights. Will we do the same when our time comes? Will we try to make ourselves more mainstream, more acceptable, more Disney family friendly so that some of us will fit in? And those of us who are confident, we will come back for you. Or we will stand together and rise, all four together. While we are proud to support Gary and Kenneth in the challenge of 377A, we are quite quiet about Ivan Tani Hong's challenge that gave them legal standing to make that challenge. As Alfian Saad said, queerness is radical, not sanitized, not commodified. Will we see the label queer isn't actually a label at all. It is moving past labels, refusing to be put in neat little boxes, neat little categories, and seeing each human being as a human being. Queer, not just an umbrella term or shorthand for LGBTQIAA, you know, whatever alphabets that you might want to attack on later, <coughs> But the erasure on these categories, we are, after all, a little bit queer. Five months before he was assassinated, Harvey Milk, the first openly gay man to hold public office in California, gave the Hope Speech in 1978 in the San Francisco Gay Freedom Day Parade. Some of you might have heard the speech before. He said, and the young gay people in Altoona and Pennsylvania, the Richmond, the Minnesotas, who are coming out and hear Anita Bryan on television and her story, the only thing they, look, they have to look forward is hope. And you've got to give them hope. Hope for a better world, hope for a better tomorrow, hope for a better place to come if the prejudices at home are too great. Go and search for that on YouTube. It's 
Someone did a very nice uh, graphic to go along with it. But what many people didn't know that in that speech, Harvey Milk spoke about racist policies and also on the closing of the South African consulate during the time of apartheid. He spoke about issues that are about LGBT rights. He spoke up for human rights. He didn't see this as my rights and this is your rights and this is the rights I will fight for and that is your own business and I don't care. This has nothing to do with me. He fought for rights regardless. This is not about repackaging LGBT rights as human rights. Though LGBT rights is human, are human rights, it is about recognizing our responsibility to address the protection of other marginalized communities. Communities that do not have power, communities that do not have a voice, communities who are not heard, the migrant workers, the people living with HIV, the sex workers, we have to address this collectively. We have to look at what we are responsible for, each other. We have to address also issues within our own community. Racism, classism, elitism, sexism, ableism, ageism. We will, should not throw anyone under the bus. I have an agenda. We have an agenda. As one united people, regardless of race, language, religion, sexual orientation, gender identity, social economic status, or nationality, to build a future based on justice, equality, and love, to achieve happiness, prosperity, and progress, not just for our nation, but for all people. I hope that we have that agenda. So I would like to begin this panel presentation. This group with individuals who were invited and like, you know, um, they got an email from me and like, do you want to speak about this? Uh, to ask them and to dig in their brains and ask them about how the LGBT community looks in the future in certain aspects. And speak about their hopes and their dreams for the futures and maybe their nightmares. So we can glimpse what it could be and what it could possibly be so that we can have a future we have faith in. So I'd like to introduce uh, the speakers today and I'll read their bios. Um, I have Vanessa, Vanessa Paul, Project Coordinator for Project X, a sex worker outreach group and also one of the organizers for Singapore's Slut Walk Movement. And then we have Jin Chong, um, a friend from very, very long, way back. One of the founders of Sayoni, member of people like us, long of that friend. And uh, someone, you know, Jean led the three women team from Sayoni to the conference to eliminate all forms of discrimination against women, the CEDAW, in the United Nations in New York. And they put on something quite uh, spectacular challenging the government on their report on the state of women in Singapore. And also about 377 there. And how 377 does not just affect gay men, but it also affect lesbian women. Intersectionality. Not just your rights or my rights. 